Uh, I'm Marike Tillman, I'm uh, the director here at the Institute, uh, and I'm very pleased to uh, introduce our uh, today's uh, lecturer, the, um, uh, uh, the Kirk lecturer from uh, the uh, um, Tate Learning Program, and this is um, uh, Pamela Rama. Uh, let me just say a little bit about it. Uh -huh. uh, she's at the moment at MRO. A university in Atlanta, Georgia, and I have uh, spent a lot of time before at the Pratt Institute in uh, Mamba. Uh, she's the, uh, a member of the Indian Academy of Sciences. She won the Trump Prize, uh, recently a chair, has been named after her uh, in India, and uh, she's on the committee of uh, prize committees at the moment, the input and the other prize. Uh, a committee and indeed I'm very um, warm to welcome you to the day to give the uh, lecture on the Hubble Space Research Board. Thank you, Ulrich, for your kind introduction. Okay, so. Um, I also want to thank the organizers of this program for uh, for this opportunity to participate in this program as well as give this talk. Thank you. So uh, the title of my talk is uh, Hase Principles for Simply Connected Groups. Let me start with some examples. So, so first, so, or simply connected groups. So I will give some very um, easy examples to start with and move on to slightly tougher examples or uh, arbitrary ground fields. So typically SLN, group of determinant one matrices, this is an example of a simply connected group. And then you can take the symplectic group, uh, SP2N, or the spin group of a split quadratic form, so these are all the split simply connected groups, uh, very easy to comprehend. They, uh, they come under the title of classical groups. And you have a list of uh, exceptional groups, G2. They, they come in classes, E6, E7, E8. So there are a bunch of split uh, groups. G2, for instance, is a very favorite group of many people. It is the group of automorphisms of the split octonian algebra. F4 is the group of automorphisms of the beautiful Albert, so-called Albert algebras, the 27 dimensional non-associative simple uh, Jordan algebra. Okay, this is the list of uh, split simply connected groups. We'll be looking at forms of these over a given ground field. Pardon? Simply connected, uh, simple simply connected groups. These are just examples I'm just giving. Okay, so, and then the next is Hasse principle. What do I mean by Hasse principle? Okay, let me do it slightly general setting. Suppose F is any field. Let omega F be a set of valuations of F, valuations of F. And uh, for each valuation, let me denote by FV the completion of F at P, completion. So what do I mean by Hasse principle? Suppose F is a family of varieties, of varieties over F. So you look at a family of varieties, we say that F satisfies Hasse principle, satisfies Hasse principle. I will contract Hasse principle as HP. If for every X in the family F, if X admits a rational point over the completions for every V in omega F, this is relative to the set of places you have picked, 
then xf is not empty. So this is the notion of Haase principle or a given general field. You fix a bunch of valuations and you look at completions. The, your family of varieties satisfies Haase principle if, if locally over completions, if it admits a rational point, globally it admits a rational point. Uh, you can also, if I am going to look at number fields, I may have to look at Archimedean valuations also. For now, I mean, eventually I'm going to restrict discrete valuations, but we can pick the valuations you want. Okay, so an so example of a family which satisfies Hase principle. The first example which comes to everybody's mind is, um, is Hase Minkowski theorem. So you just take F to be the family of quadrics, quadrics over a number field, a number field K. And here, obviously, omega K is all places of K. So the theorem of Hasse Minkowski says it is equal to given a quadratic form over a number field. If we were all completions, it has a non-trivial, it represents zero non-trivially which we contract as the form is isotropic locally, then it has a non-trivial zero globally over your number field. So this, this family typically satisfies Hasse principle. But the family of quadrics is somewhat special. So they are homogeneous spaces, for instance, under the action of the orthogonal group or the special orthogonal group as you like. So these are homogeneous spaces. And uh, so, so if you just uh, take a K is a number field. Okay, let me just, uh, uh, let me define more generally uh, homogeneous space in a general setting and come back to examples of number fields. So, so if you just take uh, F, any field, and G is a connected linear algebraic group defined over F, Linear algebraic group, group defined over F. So, what is the homogeneous space under G? X is a variety over F. It's called homogeneous. X is homogeneous under G. Under G. Of course, the obvious notion there is an action of G on X which is transitive on geometric points. It's transitive in some sense if G acts on X uh, transitively. Okay, so this is the notion of a homogeneous variety, uh, homogeneous under G. And what is the principal homogeneous space, which we'll be concentrating mostly in this talk, principal homogeneous space, Principal homogeneous space under G, it's not only transitive, the action is simply transitive. Just simply transitive action. The geometric stabilizer is to be simply transitive. So this is the notion of uh, principal homogeneous space under a connected linear algebraic group. So for, uh, for several decades, there has been a detailed study of Hasse principle for homogeneous uh, spaces under connected linear algebraic groups over number of fields. So let me just stick to the following uh, setting, K is a number field. Let me just recall a few things. And omega K as before set of all places of the number field. So Hasse principle has been quite deeply studied in, in several decades for homogeneous spaces under connected linear algebraic groups over number fields. I want to recall a some results and some introduction to a big topic. So, I mean, uh, even in this case, it is not true. Hasse principle fails in general for even for principal homogeneous spaces, even for principal homogeneous spaces, such nice spaces as principal homogeneous spaces under connected linear algebraic groups, Hasse principle can fail. 
course, the typical example we all learn when we start learning this topic is the following example. Suppose L is the biquadratic extension. And uh, this is a norm torus T L over Q, which is given by norm L over Q of Z is equal to 1. This is the norm torus associated to this um, to this uh, biquadratic extension. And what, uh, what would be a homogeneous variety? You take Xc. For uh, C is the number 25. And Xc is the space uh, given by norm L over K of Q of Z equal to C. The number 25, 13, 17 are quite important in this context. So this variety, norm equal to C, is acted on simply transitively by the normic torus. And uh, locally, this variety, when does this variety have a rational point? When C is a norm from the extension, OK? So locally, C is a norm because by choice, C is a square. This local degree of this extension at all places is just 2. Everywhere, it becomes a quadratic extension. So 25 being a square is a norm locally, but it is a task. So we have that xc of qv is not empty for all v, for all places locally it has a point, but it is a task to prove that this does not have a point. Maybe the, the proofs which are written down in the early 60s and so on, or even much before that, uh, we can just look at it in the perspective of some modern obstructions, but one can show, however, with hands that this variety doesn't have a rational point. So as good as uh, principal homogeneous space under a normic torus, the Hasse principle could fail. Which one? Thank you. Globally, there is no rational point. Thank you. Okay, so this is the situation. Then, uh, then what do we expect? So at this point, I want to bring uh, bring in the name of Knazer, who brought in the concept of uh, studying Hasse principle in the context of simply connected groups. That, okay, so it's, it's a very important contribution of Knazer. So he brought in the notion of simply connected groups of course, our number fields in order to study Hasse principle. Hasse principle for uh, principal homogeneous spaces. So let us look at one example. If we had listed simply connected split groups. Let us look at one non-trivial example. Suppose D over, uh, suppose K is a number field. So D over K is a, Central division algebra, division algebra, oh. and you can take matrices over D, and you have this, this uh, central division algebra is a form for the matrix algebra. So we have a descent of the determinant map, which is reduced norm from the matrices to K, and you can define SL and D to be just the kernel of the, uh, those, uh, uh, reduced norm set of Z, such so that reduced norm Z is one. Reduced norm one elements, which precisely is a descent of SLN, determinant one matrices. This is a typical simply connected group. So what are principal homogeneous, as we describe principal homogeneous spaces under a normic torus, here you can, well, the principal, suppose C is an F star, K star, norm C, then you can define the variety Fc to be reduced norm Z equal to C. All the elements of reduced norm equal to C, where C is a non-zero element of the base field. This is acted on transitively by reduced norm one elements, this is a principal homogeneous spaces. And in fact, the collection of all principal homogeneous spaces up to isomorphism, this is generally true over any, any base field, you take the set of collection of all principal homogeneous spaces up to isomorphism, they are all parameterized by K star mod the reduced norms from D star. Of course, if C is a reduced norm, then the space has a rational point. We say that a principal homogeneous space is trivial if it is a rational point, because once it has a rational point over F, you can identify the space with 
the group itself through choice of a rational point. Okay, so the trivial principal homogeneous space is one with a rational point. So the isomorphism classes of principal homogeneous spaces are classified by K star mod radius norm D star. They all are, occur like this. Okay, so these are typical examples of uh, simply connected groups. So what did Knesser uh, and he conjectured. So this is in the 1960, in his uh, ICM plenary talk, he just made this conjecture. So K is a number field. And G is a semi-simple, simply connected, simply connected linear algebraic group, simply connected. This is the whole point. He introduced this notion. It is, this is the right context to look at Hasse principle, linear algebraic group, group defined over K. Then if X is a principal homogeneous space under G, principal homogeneous space under G, defined over the base scale, if XKV is not empty for all, for all places, of the number field, then xk is not empty. So that is the family of principal homogeneous, uh, the family of principal homogeneous spaces under a semi-simple, simply connected linear algebra group or a number field, it satisfies Hasse principle, okay? So this is Knezer's uh, conjecture. And in fact, he made the conjecture after he proved, proved the conjecture for all classical groups, proved the conjecture for all classical groups, all classical groups. And in fact, if you want to look for the proof of Knazer for the simply connected groups, uh, the best recorded uh, notes are the Tata Institute lecture notes where he gave a series of lectures on this topic at that time. Okay, what, are, what is the list of classical groups? I listed some split groups. Here we can say quickly, SL and D, where D is a, uh, uh, what I had was central division algebra is the norm one radius norm one elements, and then you have this. Uh, this is out of th these two are type A N. This is out of form. A is a central simple algebra or a quadratic extension of K, and uh, this is a unitary involution. It's a unitary group, and then you have this symplectic group of an algebra with a symplectic involution. Each time you have an algebra underlying algebra which may not be split, and uh, Spinner group of an algebra with a, this is sigma is symplectic and sigma is orthogonal here. And this is sigma is unitary. This is a list of uh, classical group. This is CN. This is, it includes BN and BN. Okay, this, for this cl class of uh, classical groups, uh, Knazer uh, himself uh, proved that the conjecture is true. And then, of course, it uh, uh, he left it open. Uh, maybe for some class, uh, some class of exceptional groups, it is he also checked it. But the complete uh, list for exceptional groups is this was uh, proved by Harder. That is a conjecture. True. And for most of the exceptional groups, exceptional groups. This was proved by Harder. This conjecture was in the 60s, early, already early 60s, Harder finished off the conjecture for class of exceptional groups, except the groups of type E8, which came in the 80s much later due to Chernosov. So the Knesa conjecture is now a theorem and it was completely proved only in the 80s. And so in this context, I want to just uh, mention uh, conjecture of say, which is closely related to uh, Knazer's conjecture, but places Knazer's conjecture in a completely general setting. Okay, so so uh, the the point is uh, Knazer's conjecture is around the late fifties, and it was recorded in the nineteen sixty ICM meeting, almost at the same time, or <laughs> even before the conjecture was completely settled. 
So, Knazer uh, Sayer made this conjecture too. Of set. So, in order to state the conjecture, you just need one notion of cohomological dimension. CD is cohomological dimension of a field is bounded by n if, uh, if for every m greater than or equal to n plus 1 and for every torsion Galois module, Galois module A. you have that the Galois cohomology Hn of uh, f with values in A, Hm of f. Beyond this n, all the Galois cohomology groups vanish for torsion Galois module. This is the notion of cohomological dimension bounded by n. And uh, so, it, uh, so the Knazer uh, says, conjecture says that, so K is a perfect field of cohomological dimension two at most two and uh, g is a semi simple simply connected linear algebraic group linear algebraic group defined over k and uh, if x is a principal homogeneous space is a principal homogeneous space under g if x, then the homogeneous principal homogeneous space is actually trivial. In other words, if you take a cohomological dimension two field, every principal homogeneous space under a semi simple simply connected group has a rational point. There are no non trivial principal homogeneous spaces. This is the conjecture of uh, Sayer. And I want to mention that this conjecture, conjecture of Sayer, is equivalent to conjecture of Knazer, Knazer, if k is a totally imaginary number field, totally imaginary number field. Suppose the number field has no orderings, number field, okay. Then why are these conjectures equivalent? So, Knazer's conjecture is sort of a Hasse principle, a principal homogeneous space locally has a point, it has a point. However, so, Knazer actually proved that uh, Knazer himself proved the following that if K is a local, KB is a local field, as a completion of a number field, then under the same assumption G is semi simple simply connected, X is a principal homogeneous space, then XKB is always not in. Every principal homogeneous space under a semi simple simply connected group always has a rational point over a local field. Okay, there's no obstruction. So, V is finite. For all finite places, he proved that the space always is trivial. So, Knazer's conjecture effectively is a condition if the, the space has a point at all real completions, then it has a point. So, in particular, if there are no real orderings of the number field, which is totally imaginary, then Knazer's conjecture asserts that XK is not empty. Okay. So, every principal homogeneous space under a semi simple simply connected group over a totally imaginary number field has a rational point is the content of Knazer's conjecture in view of his theorem that over a periodic field there is no obstruction. But Sayer's conjecture, Sayer's conjecture says that the perfect field in this case, every principle, what is the connection between these two? So we have examples of cohomological dimension two fields. Example of cohomological dimension less than or equal to two fields or rather in this case exactly cohomological dimension two fields. The first example is post periodic fields. And after that is a totally imaginary number field. These are examples of totally imaginary number fields. So these are cohomological dimension two and therefore Nasus conjecture and Say's conjecture coincide for totally imaginary number fields. And of course, you have new examples coming in under says under the umbrella of says conjecture in the geometric setting. You just take function field of a surface. X is a surface over C or any algebraically closed. Then this has cohomological dimension at more equal to two for a surface over an algebraically. These are examples of cohomological dimension two fields where says conjecture uh, 
holds, I mean, is expected. Okay. Well, uh, once again, for totally imaginary number fields, we already said the conjecture is completely settled now. And uh, well, what next? Okay, the can I write a little bit here or not at all? Maybe is this okay? Maybe not. I can erase this. There's one more board here. So maybe I'll quickly run through the history of says conjecture. So in fact, the first non-trivial case of says conjecture is the theorem of mercurial sizzling. This is for SLNB. This uh, groups of type A and inner type. Then uh, the mercurial sizzling prove that conjecture two, conjecture two holds. Okay. Basically, as I explained before, principal homogeneous spaces under this uh, are measured by the non-zero non elements of the field modulo radius norms. This is equivalent to the radius norm map from D to uh, D to K is onto if cohomological dimension of K is at most two. So every this uh, principal homogeneous space are trivial in this case is essentially the same as the norm map is subjective. Okay, this is a very fundamental non-trivial theorem which uses the norm rate, norm residue isomorphisms and so on proved by Mercury Sussle. Okay, this is the very first resolution of this conjecture beyond direct metric setting for any general field of cohomological dimension two. And then, so Eva Bayer. Eva Bayer and uh, myself, we proved that the conjecture holds for all classical groups, holds for all classical groups. So I had already listed what the classical groups look like. They are uh, SLD or uh, uh, which is already done by mercurius Suslin. It is the unitary groups or the symplectic or the spinner groups. This whole list of groups we verified that the conjecture is true. Basically, it is settled for all classical groups. And Sayer himself remarked that if you take groups of type G2 or F4, then once again, the conjecture is true. Conjecture true. Conjecture two holds. This was remarked by Sayer already. And therefore, uh, the, the leftover cases, okay, this, this was, uh, uh, this was uh, proved into three or something. So um, the rest of the rest of the exceptional groups, till today, all the exceptional groups, the conjecture is completely open. Okay. It stays as it was in 93, where it was settled for all classical groups. But I must say there was a lot of progress about the conjecture for more special classes of fields. Okay. So if you restrict yourself to certain classes of cohomological dimensions, two fields, for instance, you are, if you are an algebraic geometer, you would like to know whether for such fields, the conjecture two is, uh, is true. That is whether principal homogeneous spaces are trivial. And this is already settled now. That is a sequence of results by Philip Gilles for other than E8 and for split E8. It is a highly geometric proof due to uh, De Jong E. So the conjecture is now putting together various results. This conjecture is completely resolved for function fields of surfaces or algebraically closed fields. Other than that, over a general cohomological dimension two field, it stays as it was since 1993. It's completely open for the rest of the exceptional groups. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, in the case of classical groups, our approach was because the groups are described by Hermitian forms and division algebras with Hermitian forms, it was reduced to some kind of classifying Hermitian forms in terms of some classical invariants like dimension discriminant, Clifford invariant. Sometimes the history invariant comes into try to classify the invariants. Beyond that, you also have to do some uh, some kind of work with respect to local spinner norms or spinner norms or local similarities or similarities. Pa okay, passing from Hermitian forms to the simply connected cover, you may have to uh, tackle 
uh, reduced norm spin or norm sensor. Okay. So these are the couple of things combined together a classification which enabled us to prove it for classical groups. G2 and F4, you have similar techniques because they are automorphisms of certain nice algebras. Okay. So you can handle it because you have, you know, a lot about the structure of Albert algebras, octonians certainly S yes, because the norm forms determine the octonian algebra. But other than that, E6, E7, E8, yeah, we don't have a good structural understanding of these groups. But there are a group of people, the, the group of people are divided on classical groups are more interesting or exceptional groups are more interesting. Definitely the physicists will say E8 is the most important group on earth. But, uh, you know, um, it, it depends. On, and some people believe only in classification free proofs. They don't like you looking at G2, F4, or X, just classical group. People just, some people just don't like, they don't make sense to them. You just have to look at G. So probably there is a classification proof for this conjecture, but I want to warn you, it cannot be easy because it is a challenge even over number fields, okay? The classical number fields, there is, there is so much of class field theory that uh, this crazes conjecture, for instance, even for totally imaginary number fields, it's a challenge to give a uniform proof without classification of Hasse principle. Okay. It is not known. It is one of the big challenges, even over number fields. So, more general fields, it will be equally a challenge. If you prove it, you also prove it for number fields, right? So, yeah, it's a very interesting open question whether you can manage it even for number fields without classification. The only known proof is via classification. Of course, I want to say there's a classification proof, free proof if you take uh, function fields, okay, positive characteristic global fields, then harder gives a classification free proof. However, uh, in general, this, this looks um, arduous task. I mean, how one does it classification free? But uh, pick any one of them you like, E6, E7, E8, or there is only one thing which I didn't describe, is the trilitarian default, which is equally interesting with, for which the conjecture is not known. Okay, so any other questions? Says conjecture? Yeah, it's, uh, oh, yeah, it is not a perfect field. There is a formulation of this conjecture if it is not perfect in terms of the Carter's differentials, which is defined, I think it is in a paper of Philip Gilles. And with that definition of uh, condition of cohomological dimension two, in terms of Carter differentials vanishing, you can just uh, state a conjecture and it has been proved for all classical groups also, in even in positive characteristics or a general field, yeah. There's a, I just didn't mention it, but there's a complete analog if K is not perfect. This is a, re, a, formula, a reformulation of this conjecture, but the vanishing condition is not Galois cohomology, it's only in the et al setting, but you have to do the Carto cohomology. What about the finite field? The finite field, even if you take a connected linear algebraic group, it is the old theorem of Lang that uh, every principal homogeneous, even every homogeneous, homogeneous space under a connected linear algebraic group has a rational point. So C1 field, and it's a very classical result of Lang. Sure. And in fact, I just said conjecture two, there's a conjecture one, which states that for uh, finite fields or cohomological dimension one field, G need not be simply connected. You take any connected linear algebraic group, and you don't have to take principal homogeneous, any homogeneous space, it has a rational point. That is the conjecture one, which was very quickly resolved by Steinberg soon after the conjecture was posed. Ah, okay. So I need some technique to So I should not raise it to uh, too much height. Good. So now let me move on from the classical situation of number fields and and then cohomological dimension two fields to function fields.
So now we go to the second part of the story. So function fields. By function field, I, I always mean function field of a curve. So there are two aspects to it. The first one, suppose k is a number field and x is a smooth geometrically integral curve over k. And f is the function field of uh, x over k. Now, instead of looking at the completions of this, let us have the intermediate fields fv as complete kv, k is a number field. So kv with respect to places of k and you take the function field of x over the completion. Okay. So these are the fields which we are going to look at and for each v in omega k. This is a bunch of over fields of this. We can ask for has a principle if a principal homogeneous space, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. If you have fv, if, if it has an fv point, whether it has an f point. Okay. This is a dimension three question. So in this context, there was a conjecture of polyethylene. Polyethylene. This was in a letter in 1990, roughly, which he wrote to say, it didn't appear anywhere, but in a letter to say, he asked this question or poses this as a conjecture. Suppose G is a semi-simple, simply connected. Once again, simply connected enters the picture, simply connected linear algebraic group linear algebraic group defined over F and X is the principal homogeneous space under G. Then if X of FV is not empty for every V in omega K, then XF is not empty. This is some kind of a Hasse principle with respect to these over fields KV of X and uh, this question, this is 1990, says question was 60s and 30 years later. And in 2000, uh, the sort of, I'll just record the results. Philip Gilles, he proved that the uh, coleothelian conjecture is true for G. G is the semi simple, simply connect. G is defined over, it's a constant group, defined over the base field K. And the curve X is just projective line, P1K. Just for the projective line, he proved that the conjecture is true. And um, once again, this is a very nice proof, no classification for all G. And uh, he uses Bruvertis and Bruvertis theory and so on and so forth to prove this, uh, this conjecture. But 2003, this is Preeti and myself, we proved here, G is defined over K, once again, classical, and uh, for X, any curve, any curve over K. So we could prove the conjecture, provided G is still a constant group, but you can take any, uh, any curve over K, then you can prove the Hausse principle, which is stated here. So these are the cases uh, which are known about this conjecture, but there is not very much known in the, in the in, with respect to questions on function fields of uh, curves or number fields with respect to Hasse principle with respect to such over fields, very little is known so far. So this is the, these are the only things I know of in the direction of uh, function fields or number fields. Okay, so now I'll turn to the next interesting case. So, so K is a periodic field. We just go instead of replace number field by a periodic field. So K is a periodic field. And X over K, smooth projective geometrically integral curve, very nice curve over K. F is the function field. Basically, F is function field in one variable over over a periodic field, okay? So here, I want to specify the places. Uh, you can take all discrete, here, the really discrete valuations, there are no ordering here, all discrete valuations of F. But this is really a very huge set. We can restrict ourselves to the so-called divisorial discrete valuations. 
discrete valuations. This is much more geometric uh, valuations to handle than all discrete valuations. So, what are these divisorial discrete valuations? We have a smooth projective curve or a periodic field. You take the periodic integers, you can construct a model over x, you can take a regular proper regular proper model. You can choose several models. And you take all co-dimension one points of this model, and that gives rise to a discrete valuation of the function field. For various co-dimension one points, you have discrete valuations associated for the function field. You vary the model and you take the collection of all such discrete valuations. They are called the so-called divisorial. Most of our purposes, it's enough to restrict ourselves to the collection of all divisorial discrete valuations of the function field. Okay. Now, in this context, this was in 2003. This, uh, we made the following conjecture, coleocaline. Suresh. So, we made the following conjecture. Exactly the conjecture is the same, only the field changes. F k of x, k is a periodic field. X is a curve x is a curve, then g is a semi-simple simply connected linear algebraic group, linear algebraic group defined over f, and x is a principal homogeneous space under g, that is how the principal holds in this situation for principal homogeneous spaces. If x of f v is not empty, for all we you know, this is genuine completions at all discrete, divisorial discrete valuations, then XF is not empty. So, this is the conjecture we made in the year 2003. Around this time, there were a lot of activities uh, concerning sort of Hase principle, various things for function fields, of course. I'll come to where it started from over periodic fields. And so we made this conduct conjecture in the following context. So we check the conjecture. So we check the conjecture for verified the conjecture for all quasi state groups all quasi state groups so after verifying for all quasi of course the difficult case was the case of e8 again but we verified it for all quasi state groups and made the conjecture that this should be generally true for all uh, uh, semi simple simply connected groups and all principal homogeneous spaces, how the principle should hold. Here we just get to k is a periodic field and x is a curve over k, and f is the function field. Okay. So, but once again, uh, so what is the progress regarding this conjecture? So, the there is a paper of Preeti and who. Uh, they prove the conjecture is true, the above conjecture is true for, for the symplectic groups and spinner groups. So, S, P to N and spin. These are the classical groups where that is basically it is B, N, C, and D, N. They prove that the conjecture is true. But once again, uh, is, the proof is in the style of the, the results of Preeti and myself, uh, which I stated for a number of fields. You do some kind of a classification, and then you also do some kind of analysis with spinner norms and radius norms and, and similarity factors and so on. So they proved the conjecture using similar techniques for the symplectic groups and the spinner groups. But the general case which remained open was the case of groups of type A and 1. This consists of, uh, this is precisely SL and D. And the next open case was the outer type A. Among the classical groups, what was left of the conjecture was 
This is the special unitary group of algebra with a symplectic simplex, uh, uh, for unitary involution. These are the two types, AN1, AN2, where the conjecture remained still open and it didn't admit a resolution using the standard techniques using classification formation forms and so on and so forth. You needed a subtler idea to tackle this case. So, so, but at this point, I want to mention some very interesting developments in this direction. So this time is correct, I guess, yeah. So now let me state the results, so theorem. This is uh, due to Preeti, myself and Suresh. So for groups of type A and one, conjecture true. What is type A and one, the conjecture true? It means that uh, if you take uh, central division algebra over such a field, Local radius nouns or radius nouns, okay? That is basically the content of this conjecture that local radius nouns or radius nouns. And um, this is extremely surprising. We thought it is something really belonging to the realm of arithmetic, this Hasse mass Schilling theorem that local radius nouns or radius nouns. But here, the same theorem is true. This is the interpretation of this theorem that local radius nouns or radius nouns already in the higher dimension. And uh, uh, the next theorem, is uh, due to myself and Suresh. We also completed the case for A and 2, that is uh, the symplectic case, uh, conjecture true. We completed for all classical groups, combining together with Preeti and who, groups of type A and 1 and A and 2, we settled the conjecture completely. And so for all classical groups, once again, the conjecture is true. Okay, so, what, what goes into the proof of this, uh, these results? Let me just uh, uh, mention the technique which goes into the proof of these, these results. Okay, so there is a very general uh, patching methods, patching techniques. Techniques which were introduced by Harbeta Hartman and Krashen. So there is a whole lot of machinery they set up. And this, this we now call it under the title patching techniques. This happened in the case when K is a, now I was discussing conjectures for periodic fields. Now K is any complete discrete valued field. Complete discrete valued field like QP, but the uh, residue field could be arbitrary, residue value, okay? And once again, you take F to be the function field of a smooth projective curve, integral, geometrically integral, whatever. So you take function field of a curve or a complete discrete value field. And uh, <clears throat> so in this setting, they introduce a bunch of overfields, bunch of overfields of F. So what are these the overfields parameterized by? So you take X over K, uh, K is a complete discrete value field. You take the valuation ring. Once again, you can construct a model over the valuation ring. And you can assume that X is a regular proper model, regular proper model over O, over the integers. And let me take the special, reduced special fiber. X naught is the reduced special fiber. Okay, so I can also assume because it's two dimensional that the reduced special fiber is a union of union of regular curves with normal crossing. X, we can maybe assume that X naught, assume X naught is a union of regular curves with normal crossing. Regular curves with normal crossing divisor. Okay, with this we can assume, I mean, they could be curves, they are not generally lines. 
Okay, so let us take P to be a finite set of finite set of closed points, set of closed points of F naught, closed points of the special fiber. And I just want one condition, it contains all nodal points, contains all nodal points. You take all nodal points of the special fiber, they are finitely many in number. You can augment it by putting any more any number of finitely many points. And the set U is just the components, irreducible components of the complement of X dot minus this finite set of points because you are just puncturing the special fiber by removing the, all the nodal points. The components are a bunch of affine curves, okay? Affine curves you have. And you, they define an overfield for each U in U. You have an overfield F U containing F. For each P in P, you have a overfield F P containing F. And you also have for each P in the closure of U. So you take a component, uh, this open component and the point on the component, then corresponding to this pair U P, then you have a overfield F U P, which contains F. You have a bunch of whole lot of overfields. This is very easy to describe FP corresponding to a point. It is just you take the local ring at that point, which is a two dimensional local ring, complete it, and take the field of actions. That is FP. This is much more subtle. And then you have this branch field. And we have this inclusion F, FU, FP. And you have this branch fields FUP for whenever P is in. In the closure of U. You have this situation. So what do they do uh, in the in this setting? What they prove is some kind of a Hasse principle with respect to these classes of overfields. Okay. So let me denote it by Sha. So this uh, bunch P comma F, the bunch of points P comma F or P comma U choosing these points and the components, let me call this a patch. Call this a patch P tilde on the model X. So what they do is sharp P tilde of F G. G is a connected linear algebraic group defined over F. Pick a model, pick a patch. They give an explicit description of this sharp. So this is a very beautiful description. What is sharp? I didn't define what is Sha. Sha is just principal homogeneous spacer under G over F. Those spaces which admit points such that X of F U is not empty. This is just Hasse principle with respect to this bunch of overfields for every U and P. Every U in U and P in P. Suppose the space admits a rational point over F P and F U. These are difficult fields and suppose you assume this happens then uh, then this x the class of x belongs to sharpie this is those which admit locally points with respect to these patching fields so what they do is they give a nice description of fg in terms of certain double coset which is uh, g of f up the branch fields you take this is over all branches and you take G of F U over all U's and G of F P's for all P's. So the branch F U's you take on one side, F P's you take on the other side. And here you have the branch fields, you have arrows, you can take the double coset decomposition. They prove that this is precisely the SHA, the patching SHA. Okay. But these are complicated fields. What's the use of this? What they prove is that with respect to the patching shaw is trivial. For instance, if G is a connected linear algebraic group, which is F rational, the function field of G is a rational variety. They prove that shaw is trivial. So if the variety of a principal homogeneous space has a point over F U's and F P's, then it has a rational. This is one of the theorems they prove, and they use it for many, many other purposes. Okay, so this description is nice, except that uh, we have two problems. One. Our Hasse principle or the conjecture is with respect to completions at discrete by all discrete valuations as the first one, not with respect to the patches. And uh, the second thing is we are looking at semi-simple simply connected groups, which are 
generally not rational or generally they are far from rational okay they are not rational so we cannot appeal to that theorem even if it reduces to a patching shock so so we use the we use this uh, use hhk in the following sense so in the case when k is a periodic field so regarding our conjecture and f is k of x in some sense uh, quite a bit of arithmetic goes into the analysis of this stuff it is very because all the residue fields you are looking at are either periodic fields or global function fields where there is a lot of class field theory available so in this setting first prove that so if x is a principal homogeneous space under g g is whatever g is semi simple simply connected we prove that x f v is not empty for all v in omega f in each one of these cases we prove that then xf is this no general philosophy we check that uh, g f u is not empty and xfp is not empty for some patch for some patch so if this condition holds then you can construct a model and you can construct a patch such that this variety x has a point over f u's and f p's this is the first reduction okay once you reduce it to this then we have to ha handle the double coset decomposition you have to this this being trivial they called it factorization for g any element here is a product of an element here and an element here and the second uh, hard fact is to prove that factorization holds okay because these groups are not rational so it is a non trivial sort of technically horrendous uh, uh, job to say that there is factorization for this these groups which we did for an1 and an2 okay uh, so that is the method of proof uh, for the conjecture for the all the classical groups it is completed now using this patching techniques maybe a couple of minutes i just want to mention the patching techniques of harbeta hartman crash and they are over any complete discrete value fields with arbitrary residue field okay there is no constraint on residue field you prove theorems just for uh, function fields of periodic curves uh, you prove uh, whatever you reduce it to patching you prove this factorization holds one may wonder probably is a much more general uh, statement or a conjecture that if k is any complete discrete value field you take a function field in one variable and g is semi simple simply connected whether there is hasse principle with respect to principal homogeneous spaces the same question but don't assume it's a periodic field it take any complete discrete value field of course i want to say that there are uh, we looked at it for quite a bit and finally so we joined efforts harbeta hartman krashen and then kolyot and even arimla suresh okay all of us sat together and finally we arrived at examples where over general fields the hasse principle fails okay general complete discrete value fields even if you take simply connected groups hasse principle fails so the theorems i have stated are more in an arithmetic flavor rather than a complete general algebraic setting or a geometric setting okay it doesn't extend and the real uh, serious obstruction to arriving at uh, such an example there are two things which matter one is you have this case complete discrete value you have a residue field from sense the arithmetic of the residue field matters okay so if with respect to g you may just take suppose g is even a constant group defined over the residue field you may have non trivial invariance like r equivalence classes and so on giving obstruct giving obstructions and the second obstruction is pretty geometric you take the special fiber which i have drawn there as soon as the special fiber encounters a loop then there is an obstruction okay combine combining these two you arrive at examples where the conjecture fails in more general setting so it is really a conjecture concerning function fields of periodic curves so thank you very much Uh, when you refer to patching technique, it's uh, this description of Sha. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Description of Sha? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, the patching technique is precisely what they prove is given these patches, 
they prove there is an equivalence of categories of vector bundles, for instance. Okay. So, first of all, they prove that this FPs and FUs, they have an intersection property, the intersection is the F. And they prove that if you are given uh, vector spaces or FUs and FPs in a categorical sense, you know, and then which with gluing, then you can construct something over F. Okay. So, that is the kind of, uh, that is why it is called a patching. Okay. Given over FUs and FPs objects with gluing along the branch fields, you can construct an object over F. Okay. Not just vector spaces, vector spaces with a tensor or principal homogeneous spaces, all these cases. You can glue tosses or tosser, whatever spaces over FUs and FPs over the branch fields to get something over F. That's why the patching technique enters. It's called patching technique. And in this FUs, uh, they absorb a lot of the geometry of the underlying X, underlying curve X. Okay. Uh, how you construct uh, the, the, the patches? Yeah, it is very simple. You take a regular prop, of course, you, have, you need a... Oh, but it is very, very, very complicated. We keep refining it, refining it a lot. We start with some patch, okay? And then you will go to, for instance, if you want to prove that the radius norm is subjective, say, okay, if locally it is a radius norm, it is a radius norm, you just have to take that element we are looking at, which is local radius norm, you have to also resolve the components of the support of lambda, okay, and then there are many, many, many geometric things which enter the picture, all those things you need resolutions, but you can do the resolution any number of times, so that any number of devices can be put in proper position, okay. And finally, what you get is the patch you use, okay, which is good. First of all, you have a division algebra. So that has a ramification. You put the divisor of ramification in proper position to start with, okay. And then you have a lambda, which is a radius norm. You put the divisor of lambda in proper position, okay. And then a few more things you have to do to arrange the divisors of the special components in a particular way. And finally, you can prove it. But it is a laborious process, I mean, uh, yeah. So there is a reception outside after you know, just now we finish up. So everybody is welcome for this. So uh, this